Hello and welcome. In this tutorial, we're going to learn about Python list. A list is a collection which is ordered and changeable. In Python, lists are written with square brackets and list allows for duplicate values. Let me show you an example of how to create a list. First, we define a variable. Here, I define a variable with the name my list, and within square brackets, I enter in the values. So we have a combination of different data types here. We have integers, floats, and strings. These values are separated using commas. So all these values here are now stored in this variable, my list. And to print out this list, we use the built-in print function and enter in the name of the list. Here is the content of the list, my list. And that is how to create a list in Python. You can access an item in a list by referring to the index number. Index in the list starts at zero. So this will be zero. One, two, three, four, five. Using the following syntax, let me show you how to access a specific item in a list. You first enter in the list name, which is my list, and within square brackets, you enter in the index number. So if we want to access the second index, we enter in two. And to print out the, the second index, we use the built in print function. So the second index of this list, my list, is red because the index starts at zero. This is zero, one, two. And that is how to access items in a list. Accessing items in a list from right to left is called negative indexing. Using the following syntax, let me show you how to use negative indexing in a list. You first specify the list name and within square brackets, you enter in the index number with the minus sign in front of it. So this will be minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five, and minus six. So if you want to access the value green, that will be minus one. And to print this out, we use the built-in print function. And that is how to use negative indexing in a list. You can access a range of index in a list by specifying the start point and the end point. Let me show you an example of how to access a range of values from a list using the following syntax. First, you specify the list name. And within square brackets, you enter in a colon. So this is the start point and this is the end point. So we want to access starting from index one to index three. So what we do, we enter in from the start point, we say index one, start at one. And we want to stop at index four. So everything before the fourth index. So that will be starting from one, two, three will be returned. So to print out this range of values, we use the built-in print function. Now we have a new list with a range of values, starting from index one to the third index. And that is how to access a range of values in a list. Using the same idea, we can access a range of items in a list using the negative index. Let me show you an example. So if you want to access these items from this index to this index, so this is minus four to minus one, that will be returned will be red, blue, and yellow. So we're gonna start from red until green. So green will be excluded. That point will be minus four 
and the endpoint not inclusive would be minus one. So if we print this out, so if you're accessing the value from right to left, the negative index starts from minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four. So we're starting from minus four, which is red, until not including minus one. Here, so here are the values of the range of items in a new list using the negative indexing. And that's how to access a range of items using the negative indexing. You can change the value of a specific item in a list by referring to the index number and assigning a new value to that index number. Let me show you an example of how to change an item value in a list using the following syntax. First, you specify the list name. And within square brackets, you enter in the index value. So if you want to change index one, you enter in one and we assign a new value. So if you want to change the value of index one to a string, say Monday, Now, if we print out my list, now the value of the first index has been changed to Monday. And that is how to change item value in a list. You can loop through a list using a for loop. Let me show you an example of how to loop through a list with the following syntax. Here we have a for loop and this X is the variable that will hold the individual item in a list Why the loop iterates through the list. Now this is the value of the list and that is how to loop through a list using a for loop. To determine if a specific item is present in a list you can use the in keyword. Let me show you an example with the following syntax. So here, we're using the if statement to find if red is present in my list using the in keyword. So let's print this out. So, so yes, red is present in my list. And that is how to determine if an item exists in a list. To determine how many items a list has, you can use the length function. Let me show you an example of how to get the length of a list. So this function, len, will determine the length of my list. So there are six items in my list. Remember the index starts at zero. So zero, one, two, three, four, five. And that is how to find the length of a list. To add an item to the end of a list, you can use the append method. Let me show you an example. And within the method, you enter in the item you want to add at the end of the list. Now, if we print out my list, you can see white has been added to the end of my list because of the append method. And that is how to add an item to the end of a list. To add an item at the specified index, you can use the insert method. Let me show you an example using the following syntax. First, you specify the list name dot insert. And that is the insert method. If we want to insert the new item in index one, we specify one. Then we specify the item we want to insert. See, so if, so if we want to insert 100, 
So if we print this, you see the first index now holds the value 100. So these other values have been pushed back and the first index is now 100. And that is how to add an item to a list at a specified index. Using the remove method, you can remove a specified item. Let me show you an example. First, you specify the list name dot remove as the method. So if you want to remove the first index, then if we print this out now, you can see that 99.5 has been removed from the list. Using the pop method, you can remove a specified index or the last index if an index is not specified. Let me show you an example using the following syntax. So no index has been specified here. So the last item will be removed. So if we print this out now, you can see green has been removed from the list. And that is how to use the pop method to remove the last item of a list. Also, you can delete a specified index using the del method. Let me show you an example. So if we want to remove blue, which is the third index, zero, one, two, three. Enter in three. And if we print out this now, my list, you can see blue has been removed from the list. And that is how to remove a specified index from a list. And to delete the list completely, you can use the delete function. Let me show you an example. Now, if you print out my list, the list has been deleted because there's no list with the name my list. And that is how to delete a list. You can empty the content of a list using the clear function. Let me show you an example. First, you specify the name of the list, dot clear. Now, if we print out the, the content of my list, it's an empty list. And that is how to empty the content of a list. You can copy the content of one list to another list by using the following syntax. So first, you declare a new variable where you want to copy the list. Let's, let us call this my list two. Then we specify the list you want to copy. Dot copy. Now my list two will now hold the value of my list. So if we print this out. My list two is printed out. Now my list two holds the same content as my list. And that is how to copy a list. There are several ways you can use to join two or more lists together. One of the easiest way is by using the plus operator. Let me show you an example. Here we have two lists. So we define a third list. So what we have done here is add these two lists together and assign the values of these two lists combined to this list.
and if we print out this my list three it holds the combination of my list and my list two and that is one of the ways to join two or more lists together alternatively you could use a for loop and integrate through one of the list and append the value to the other list let me show you an example so here we're using the for loop to loop through my list at each iteration this variable x we hold the individual item value of my list and append it to my list 2 so if we print out my list 2 now you see my list 2 had three items now it has the combination of my list items and the existing items in my list too and that is another way of joining two or more lists together using the append function and a for loop you can create a new list using the list constructor let me show you an example using the following syntax first you declare a variable let's call this my list then we use the list constructor which is list in parentheses we specify the list of item we want to create so we want to create a list of days of the week and to print this out we use the built-in print function and specify the list name now my list now holds these values using the list constructor and that is how to use the list constructor to create a new list and that's it for this video and i will see you on the next one